Welcome fellow folders and this is going to be a short and sweet video. I'm also going to film standing up where I think it's easier to show individual parts than sitting down. Uh, I can change like the colour and angles etc. Anyway, this video is all about useful tips and tricks to help fold a Shuki cattle model. Now, if you don't already have his book, Origami Nature Study, why don't you have it? It is one of the best books that you can buy out there at the moment. Now we're going to be focusing on his uh, models. Um, so we're going to be jumping into it. You have probably already heard about Shuki Kato and his models and his works. And if you don't already know, the, the diagrams in this book are probably the most complex diagrams out there to follow and fold at the moment. It's simply because Shuki's models are extremely realistic and the best designs for these models out there and here are a few useful tips that you can take in to help fo uh, fold and follow along uh, from the diagrams. Now make sure, uh, tip one, to have a perfect square. This is when you want to have your square as perfect as possible because if you don't know Shuki's way of pre-creasing using tilted grids tends to use the full diagonal and the pre-creases just for example step 17 the creasing uh, the creases are at weird angles so if you can have your square as perfect as possible it will really really help because in his models you need to be as accurate as you possibly can be in order to get past the first uh, pre-creasing, to get past pre-creasing, if you are not accurate you won't get past collapsing, that is a guaranteed fact. So it's important that you have a perfect square and take your time making sure you have precision pre-creasing, it's so important for a model of Shuki's to get it as best as you possibly can. Tip number two is what I call the look ahead method. Now when Shuki, this is what he does quite a lot, if you don't already notice, he will tell you how to pre-crease X amount and then you'll start collapsing. And then a few steps after, he will get you to pre-crease more. So the look ahead method is looking ahead after the pre-creasing steps to see if any other pre-creasing is going to be required after that. Now, why is that important? It's important because, let me just find the example, you basically start collapsing in step 44. Pre-creasing stops just before it, and then if we fast forward from, from step 44 to step 69 is when the collapsing begins. This has his Asian elephant which I have here, I'm using this as example. So from step 69 the collapsing begins. Now if we fast forward a few steps, we look and we see step 73, step 74, step 75, 76, 77. So the next bunch of steps are pre-creasing now, it would be much easier if you pre-creased each of these lines and creases when the paper is completely flat. Because if you have it in the beginning of collapsing, the layers are building up, some parts are thinner, some parts are thicker, you can't get the right, uh, the even surface to fold over to line up. You can't open the model up to double check to make sure the lines are accurate. Um, it's so much easier to pre-crease all of those creases when the paper is flat because you already have um, the grid, the angled grid. You have references that you can count like one across, five up and then make it. You can do all of that when the paper is flat. Whereas looking at step, if it goes in focus, Anyway, step 68, he gets you to make all of these angled creases 
when the paper is in progress collapsed and it would be much harder to make it then uh, than compared to now when it's completely flat. So that's what I did. I pre-creased what I was told to pre-crease and then I looked ahead like the next 30 steps and then I noticed that we have all these creases that we still need to pre-crease. So then I pre-creased all of those as best as I possibly could because the paper is flat I can get it extremely accurate and it's really paid off and helped. Go ahead and I can't really show you um, it's impossible to see from this angle but it's such a good trick to do and in every diagram as well the look ahead method pre-crease what you're told to pre-crease and look ahead like the next 30 steps and see if there are anything else to pre-crease before you collapse because it's much easier to pre-crease when it's flat than when it's mid collapsed Tip number three is, this is one of the most important ones you should always try and remember to do. Shuki always tells you to crease through both layers. So both layers at once, so like just say this angle here. I need to make, oops, I wasn't done. I need to make a crease from here to here. I've got the reference here. I've got the reference here, for example. Then I'll just fold over through both layers. When you do that, do not do that, I meant to say, because when you fold over, the layers split. Look at that. The layers don't line up. Of course you would take your time to make sure they line up, but the layers will shift and then one crease, probably at the back, because you'll use the references on that side to line up, the top layer will move forward, so when you unfold it, they will be angled creases and they will not be lined up. So I would definitely not recommend creasing through both layers. Do it individually. So let me just show as example, this little bottom crease on the bottom right, from here to here. What you would do is, you already have this reference, and then this one. So you would, if I can lift it up. You would find the references on this side, make the crease. And then you would flip over to the other side. Same thing again. I'm going to find this reference and then this one and then make the crease. It's definitely superior to try and fold through both layers when that could happen. And then your crease is off by that amount. And then when you're mid collapsing you're wondering why why is nothing lining up i have done it as best as possible but nothing has lined up or is lining up or is completely off so do not crease through both layers i think he just did that to make it easier to show the diagram or to tell how it's done and um, so yeah i can see i, I, I can understand why shuki uh, did that but definitely i wouldn't recommend through both layers Crease through each layer individually, you will get your accuracy will be much better and you will be thanking yourself when you're about to tap. Number four is because he has the most complex diagrams to follow in existence, take your time. It's going to be so important because you have pre creased super precise. Now, if you rush, you may screw up. Take as long as it needs to follow the diagram. I'm using his Giganto as example because it's the most complex in the book and kept at the very last uh, pay, uh, set of pages. And yeah, so take your time. It's very important that you perform each of these sequences as best as you possibly can because it will make your life much easier when you get to the end of the diagram things will line up, you will be happy, it will be how it should be, it will look how it should be. So it's very important to take your time. Don't rush, you've got all the time in the world. It's not a race to make this model. So important that you do it as best as you can to get the best look that you possibly can. So take your time. Tip number five is 
one that a friend gave me. I'm not sh sure who it was uh, that recommended this for me to try. Once I explain it, if, the, if this was you, please let me know so I can credit you. It's such a genius way. I never thought about doing this as well. And this works for any diagram. But we'll use step 240 from his Giganto, which I took a picture of on my phone, which is here. Now, when he asks you to repeat steps behind, repeat on the other side, the diagram is, as you know, for the model facing like left to right. Uh, my fingers are at the right, the palm is at the left. When you flip it over, fingers are at the left, palm is at the right. So as the opposite, the diagram is only for one direction, uh, one side of the paper. Now a good trip, uh, trip, trick to make it easier to follow, like complicated steps, I've used this one as example. I, I, so I have taken a picture of it. What I'm going to do on my phone is, I'm going to click it and I'm going to click edit. And then I'm going to click this little crop sign. Now I will click this mirror or flip and as you can see it, it has flipped the image which is now perfect for the other side. It will make it much easier to follow um, a complicated fold like this, doing it on the other side because this diagram is only for one side. So when I flip it I have the exact thing I need to do but for the other side. I wish I knew about this when I was folding mine because I did get quite confused with uh, the legs on uh, doing it on the other side. This is a great trick. I wish I knew then. So if you can do that on your phone, fantastic. If not, then um, hopefully you can uh, follow uh, normal and remember how to do it. But definitely worth doing this. I'm going to be doing this so much. And if it was you that recommended this to me, please let me know. I really want to credit you for this genius idea. And step number six, the final step. If all five steps that you have tried fail, just cry. Alright everyone, thank you all for watching. I hope to see you in the next video.